We're back! Whoa, dude, you've got to chill out. Get it? We're talking about a war chiller. Here we are with another Spike product video from Spike Engineering. We got Ryan, Adam, and we are going to dive into the wide and wonderful world of wart chillers. All right, you might ask yourself, what is a wart chiller and why do I need one in my brewery? Great question. Well, it chills your wart to pitching temperatures. It's as simple as that. And why do you gotta chill your wart down? What happens if you run that 180 degree wart right into your fermenter? Well, there's two main reasons why you wanna get your wart to pitching temperature as quickly as possible. One, it's gonna save you a lot of time. And time is money, right? Yes. And two, you, Basically, from boiling to pitching temperatures, there's a danger zone where bacteria and other things can get in your wart and kind of could ruin your beer. Yep. So you want to try to go as quickly as possible through that danger zone. And then also, too hot of wart can kill your yeast pretty That's much. That's true. Yeah, you want to get down to that tipping, the pitching temperature recommended by your yeast strain. Yeah, and so there's a lot of different kinds of uh, wart chillers out there. Um, we've got a counter floor chiller. We've also got immersion style and plate style. And uh, we reached out to our user group and really tried to find out what are the most popular ones out there, um, you know, just to make sure that we were able to compare well to that to those chillers. And we actually brought them in to do a side by side test. And so, big shout out to all those that helped us with that and sent their chillers in. You'll be getting them back pretty soon. Um, and uh, let's just kind of talk about them, kind of introduce them based on starting with price point, and then we'll kind of talk about each one where they ended up with as far as chilling rate and how they performed. Let's do it. So we're gonna start from lowest price point, moving on up to highest, um, starting with the Jaded Hydra Immersion Style Chiller. Uh, that comes in around 169. Then we've got the Stout Counterflow Chiller. Uh, that comes in around $200. Um, we've got the Blickman Therminator, which is a plate style chiller. Uh, that one's listed at about 239. Uh, then we've got the Exchillerator Max, um, that's also a counterflow chiller with the plastic uh, outside jacket. That's also around 230. Um, then we've got the copper chiller, which is uh, actually the chiller that we've had on our trio for a number of years now. Uh, that comes in around $300. And then finally, there's the spike, the new spike uh, stainless steel copper combination counterflow chiller, which, uh, depending on MPT versus TC, uh, comes in between $300 and $325. So, Adam, we ran all these chillers through rigorous testing. Um, can you talk about all the tests that we did? Absolutely. So yeah, something just to note, you know, we do these videos a lot and we talk about kind of pros and cons and performance and results. Like pretty much every time we do a product like this, we try to make sure that we are essentially testing and using it like any home brewer would, right? What's the, uh, what's the way that that home brewer is gonna use this product? What do they care about? Let's, let's measure for that, let's record that, let's, let's kind of see how, how things stack up that way. And so we did the same thing with this, really, um, you know, it was a pretty simple and straightforward test. You know, boiling water coming out of the kettle and going straight into the fermenter through the chiller. Um, so we controlled uh, to the wort temperature, we controlled our water temperature, not too hot, not too cold, kind of to simulate that difference between uh, the temperature of your tap, because a lot of times you really just can't control that. Yep. Uh, obviously, you're going to set it as cold as you can, but you know it is what it is. Um, so we set that to kind of a nice even 60 degrees, and um, we set the same flow rate through every single chiller just to make sure that that was consistent. And then we kind of hit record and kind of saw how long it took to get the wart down to your target. And you know, in almost every case, you're usually targeting that 68 to 70 degree uh, yeah. pitching temperature. So, you know, how much uh, does it take to, to get to that target? So really that's, that's kind of what we use to judge how effective a chiller is gonna be, right? Because the faster you can flow through that and hit your temperatures, um, the quicker you're gonna be off and done with your brew day. Yep. So uh, let's kind of dive right in here and talk about the first one, which is the Stout Counterflow. Um, and we're gonna talk about these in order of how well they performed. So this one was kind of near the bottom, right? Which you wouldn't expect, given yeah. its size. Yep. But so this is, might could be a classic case of size doesn't always matter. Maybe not, maybe not in this case. So what do we got going on here, right? So we have a 
coiled counterflow chiller, got a stainless exterior with a stainless steel interior tube. Right, so um, stainless on the outside is good, stainless on the inside, not so good, right? Because it's uh, not a very good conductor. Yeah, so it, it then that's probably why it was our poorest performer. Yep. Uh, some pros, it has some nice TC fittings here and here. Um, these are MPT fittings, so it's good, not great. I mean, it would be nice if one of them had a garden hose fitting on it. Um, the, the ports are also a little bit close, so when you've got a TC, something you got to be aware of is, you know, obviously you need room to install stuff, you got to swing the clamp on. Yeah. Um, so things are a little bit tight here, um, not the worst, but it was a, a little bit of uh, futzing around on that. But performance wise, I mean, you've got all this tubing, but I think that stainless steel inner jacket really kind of showed through. And this one, I think, uh, clocked in around 0.7 yeah, uh, GPM right. yeah. through, which is kind of like that chilling rate. Um, and so uh, for as much tubing and as large as this is, which really takes up a lot of space on your brewery, it doesn't have any brackets or ways to mount it, um, takes up a lot of space, but isn't uh, really the most effective one in the market. Yeah, it's also like there's no plate to mount it anywhere. It's kind of... I mean, it's large and awkward. It's, yeah. yeah. It's, so let's move on to the next one. All right, so next up on the list, uh, we've got this uh, Jaded Hydra immersion style chiller. Um, as you can see, it's very tall. Uh, it looks like a giraffe or alien, I'm not sure which, but um, yeah, definitely kind of an interesting piece. Uh, this is, um, came in around one gallon per minute, so um, still kind of on the lower end um, of, of performance. Uh, this was a very manual process. As you could see, um, you drop this into your kettle and you really have to manually agitate the wort in order for it to get it to perform well. So uh, as an example, when we were chilling down a 10 gallon batch, it took about 13 or so, 13 and a half minutes in order to do that. So you gotta sit there with a mash paddle and just kind of like really stir for that long. And so it's just more of a time and labor investment. And then, you know, obviously this is kind of a separate piece, so it, you can't really permanently mount this in your brewery as a kind of like a, a fixed place. You're gonna have to have a place to store it, pull it out of your kettle. Um, and then finally, when you're pulling it out, it's just gonna have a lot of nasty stuff on it, kind of stuck between the coils. Um, you can see inside here, there's uh, kind of stacked rings and it's just gonna be difficult to clean that out. So you're gonna have to uh, spray and scrub and get that out before you store it. But yeah, I mean, otherwise it's easy to connect, garden hose connections, um, you know, it, it does the job. That's what I used when I first started home brewing. Yep. Next up, we got the uh, Blickman Therminator. Uh, it's different from our previous ones we talked about. This one's a plate chiller. Mm -hmm. So what that means is that there's copper plates kind of sandwiched next to each other and there's wort flowing on one side and cold water flowing the other and that's how you are gonna chill your wort. So good flow rate, right? Good flow pretty rate, good flow rate through. yeah. Pretty much middle of the road <laughs> cost. Um, with home brewing though, see the thing is with the plate chillers, like they can clog up really fast. Yes. Yep, because it's really small channels and so you have to have a very meticulous cleaning regimen in yes. order to prevent that buildup. And then once it happens, sometimes it's really difficult to reverse that. Yeah, and the one of the big differences between the, the homebrew plate chillers and professional chillers um, is that the professional chillers you can take completely apart and clean the insides really thoroughly. Um, but unfortunately on most of the, the homebrew size, they're, yep. they're not gonna be able to take them apart. Yep, so what else do we got going on here? We got well, it's nice, uh, you got a couple garden hose <coughs> fittings so you can, uh, for your water inlet, water outlet, um, so that's they, your water outlet. This is the way, yep. So yeah. they do have the garden hose, that's good. They have MPT. These ports are incredibly close together. And oh, so yeah. I can say from my personal experience when I was running this through um, our test cycle that we mentioned before, um, you know, it's very easy. You almost don't even have enough room to swing a wrench and to tighten things up. Um, so if you got to put elbows on, uh, if you want to put a tri clamp adapter, I mean, there is no room for any of that. And so just kind of very, um, very tight. Uh, fitting arrangement. You got one side coming in the back, one side going out the front, so you got a lot of um, hose loops and kind of a weird uh, weird setup, at least that I found when, when we were running this in our brewery. So kind of a um, kind of an interesting interesting arrangement there. Yeah, and on the back side you have some mounting studs that aren't necessarily in the best spot. Um, yeah. Kind of have to buy a secondary thing in order yep. to mount, mount it properly. Yeah, um, not very DIY friendly in yeah. terms of just mounting it to your table and go home. For sure. And this one flowed around 1.1 GPM. So 
Um, definitely I had to throttle it back down and it was pretty touchy in order to get it to those targets. Um, kind of had to move it around a bit in terms of the warp flow. So uh, just, uh, I think, leave it a little bit to be desired. So next we have tied for third with the Blickman plate chiller. Here we have what we call kind of the generic uh, copper counterflow chiller. Um, we've actually sold this for uh, a number of years with our, our trio system. Um, you know, it's kind of tried and true. It, it, it does perform well. You're always able to chill in a reasonable amount of time with this. Um, it's tri-clamp available, which is great. Um, it's got a garden hose but it, uh, coming out, but it does not have a garden hose coming in. Um, in general, uh, it's because it's copper, it has a, a good uh, transfer rate. Uh, came in at about 1.1 GPM. Um, I mean, this one's been in our brewery for four years until we got the new one. Yeah, I mean, it, it, connections are a little bit close. Yeah. It's a little bit taller. Um, you know, it does have an integrated bracket, which is nice. Uh, we just felt like there is, you know, a lot of ways that we could improve on this. Okay, so next, Ryan, we've got the uh, Exchillerator Max. So as you can see here, this one has a little bit of a different construction element than some of the others. Um, this one definitely will support your uh, hardware store uh, because this is made of um, tubing, PEX fittings, and PEX, um, yeah. which is actually, you know, really smart because um, they do get a really effective chiller out of it. Um, I think this one came in second, about 1.2 yep. GPM. Um, as you can see, um, that's kind of where the, the pros end, at least for me. Uh, it's got tri-clamp option, which is great. However, the uh, layout and arrangement is kind of kinda weird. weird. Yeah, uh, these are adapters that the home brewer had to put on. Um, so you, you're definitely gonna have to put your own uh, fittings on the uh, garden hose ends. And uh, the tri-clamps are great, but they're just in very weird places and yeah. spots. Um, and this whole coil, just because it's made out of plastic, it kind of, it's it's not very stable. So you gotta put these metal braces on and it kind of has a lean and it um, shifts around a lot. It's just not a very uh, sturdy piece. Um, so. Uh, but long story short, I mean, works well as a counterflow chiller, and um, yeah, we think that there's just ways to do it better. So now we've got the spike work chiller. Um, you know, this is kind of what it's all been leading to. Um, this thing is awesome. Yeah. So let's talk about this. You can see here we have both, uh, you know, female MPT and uh, tri clamp options here. Um, let's talk about first how this thing was constructed. Right? Yes. So our big choice in how this is constructed as materials and how it's put together. So number one, we wanted the best uh, chilling rates that we could possibly get. Yep. And we also wanted it to look good. So that drove our decision to go with a stainless steel outer jacket. You can see it's very nice, very clean. All stainless steel fittings. All stainless steel. You know, you don't have to do brazing or anything weird like that on the, on the outside fittings. Um, and then, of course, on the inside, we've got copper. Now, copper is great because you're gonna get the best chilling rate that you yep. can, but how could we do even better? Um, so what do we do? We chose to do what's called kind of like a corrugated or convoluted copper. And so what that means is not only is it a copper tube inside, it's actually got these spiral ridges. And so the wart's flowing through that and there's just more turbulence and surface area. And the cold water on the outside of that is just going to be that much more effective, which is why you don't need this thing to be massive in order to be effective, right? So you've got more space. It's this more compact piece. Um, you're just getting more performance for a smaller package. Moving on, uh, let's talk about usability, right? As you can see, we've got the two different options. We've got tri-clamp uh, and MPT, but then we also made sure that those fittings were spaced far enough apart. Yep. Yep. So especially when you're on a tri-clamp, you've got to have space for those fittings. You got to do a little mm -hmm. flick, right? Got it. I mean, yeah. everyone likes flex on how well they can flick a tri-clamp on. So. Exactly. So you got more than enough room to easily and quickly make your connections. Yep. Um, we've also got the female uh, garden hose connection, which is how most people have with their, you know, the male end of their hose. So yep. made that quick and easy. Um, let's talk about mounting. Um, you've got a few different ways to mount. We made sure that this thing was welded with an integrated bracket. You can kind of see that there. There's both, you know, two holes and threaded nuts on there. So that allows you that no matter what your brewing situation is, you got a brew table with a shelf underneath, yep. maybe a two by four stand, whatever it is that you've got, you can mount it from the top down, you can mount it from the bottom up. It doesn't really matter. Yep. You've got an easy way um, without added costs to be able to, to set this up in yeah. your brewery. And even in our solo table, we 
create a, a bracket that allows you to mount it kind vertically. Flip it up like this, yep. So and, even uh, when you don't have a lot of space, yeah, right? Yeah, tight spot. Yep, so you can mount it like this. We've got a quick and easy bracket because you got that mounting point that mm -hmm. makes it real easy to, to, to figure out. Yep. Um, other than that, you know, we've got the, our, our ports are labeled, so they're etched so that you know exactly, you don't mix up your wort and your waters in and out. That would make for uh, a frustrating brew day, certainly. Oh, yeah. You don't want to get those mixed up. Yep, so, um, but let's, most important, talk about performance, yes. right? So we did the test. Um, obviously, we worked hard to make sure that we knew this was going to perform well, and, you know, it, it exceeded our expectations. This um, thing is awesome. Yeah, so, I mean, pretty much when you're running hot, you know, boiling wort through this, you don't really need to restrict the flow through it at all because, you know, 200 degree wort going in, you got nice cold water flowing through it on the on the water side. This is going to be coming out around, you know, five to ten degrees uh, above your water temperature, and this thing was pretty much valve all the way open. So yep. I think we recorded 1.9 or so GPM through it, which mm -hmm. is almost twice as much as the next lowest competitor. Yep. And what that really translates to is a faster brew day, right? Oh, You're gonna yeah. be able to chill um, into your fermenter fast. If we do this on our Nano, we're trying to move 30 gallons. Um, you know, that makes it go in 15 minutes. Oh yeah, I easily got to pitching temperatures for a Doppelbach I just uh, made. Real good, yep. real easy. Yep. So let's talk about cons. Honestly, from my perspective, uh, the only con here is it is on the high end of the um, price list, right? Yeah. Three, 300, 325, depending on what um, version you get. Um, but you know, our mentality is buy once, cry once. This would be a lifetime purchase. You yep. know, pretty much give you the best possible chilling rates for the tightest package. Um, for a few extra bucks, I don't think you could go wrong. No, this thing is awesome. I cannot reiterate that enough. Well. I think we covered a lot of ground today. Oh yeah, lots. Um, tested a lot of chillers. Thank you again for all of you who sent uh, your samples to us to test. And um, you know, I think it's pretty clear. This is a, a clear winner. And uh, you know, this is uh, available on our website today. Yep. Uh, we launched it a few weeks ago, and it's been popular so far. And I think this would be a great piece in your brewery. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to our team. And uh, have a great day.